Now, we have seen how we can uh, use geometrical methods to synthesize for four positions of a moving plane. We particularly use joint jabber and then using a program to determine the circle point or center point and then uh, determine the corresponding center point or circle point. Uh, in this video, I will discuss how we can determine the uh, moving and fixed centrals, uh, moving and fixed pivot points, uh, in case of four position uh, synthesis, using analytical techniques. Now, uh, remember that for geometrical method, uh, we uh, in, in first required that for homologous points to be on a circle, we had to satisfy certain angular relationship. And outgoing from that angular relationship, we obtained an equation uh, for four points to lie on a circle. And then, uh, since those points were uh, homologous points, we described their location in terms of a point Z on the moving frame and uh, the homologous points uh, uh, being transformed by uh, knowing the uh, poles, from which we obtained uh, an equation in the uh, uh, formula C, uh, which is a cubic equation, and uh, it, it tells us where uh, it gives us a, a locus, in fact, uh, of points whose four homologous points lie in a circle, or, uh, and uh, it is a, a related by this equation. Now, uh, by the, we know the location of the poles, and we can determine uh, Z is a, a uh, 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 you have a relation, uh, a, a locus for Z. Now, uh, if you use poles uh, themselves, P12, P14, P, uh, P, P, P12, P14, P13, P23, P, P34, you will obtain center point curve. If you use the image poles, P three four one P sorry P P three four one P two three four one, you will end up with uh, uh, circle points. Okay, now analytically, you can utilize this equation, uh, obtain a cubic equation, give a value for x, and then obtain three, or hopefully three values for y. But it is not usually done that way. Uh, instead, uh, what we do is uh, we equate the right and left hand sides of this equation to to try beta. In that case, we end up with two second order equations. These are circles. Now, you determine the intersection of these two circles, similar to the uh, geometric method, analytically this time, to determine the corresponding uh, circle point or center point. Uh, now, as you change beta, as you change the, the beta, you will obtain different points. So you will obtain a set of points and locus again using analytical technique and using this equation. But instead of using this equation, diet formulation seems to be uh, more uh, straightforward, I would say, and uh, usually uh, uh, this equation was derived by, in the 1960s by uh, Ferdinand and Selvig, 
uh, in, uh, in 86, 1986, uh, Sander and Erdman developed this diode formulation, which is quite good. Uh, I would say uh, we can use that in that case. In case of diode formulation, remember, in the basic form, we said, okay, we don't know A0, we don't know A, but let us assume that we have A over here, A0 over here. We did represent this, the, uh, A0, the A0A as a vector W, and we represent A101, uh, the first position, as Z vector. Now, uh, when the moving plane moves to a position J, it will be rotated by an angle phi J, uh, it, it, it will be at an angle phi j. In initially, it is phi one. It will rotate hence uh, by an angle alpha two equal phi two minus phi, phi j minus for alpha j phi j minus phi one. So we know alpha j. In that case, this vector w, since it is rotating about a zero, it will rotate by an angle beta j, which I don't know. But the angle, the rotation of this vector z from the first position to this position is known. It is phi j minus phi 1. So z e tri phi j, this vector. This is w e tri beta j. In that case, I can write the uh, loop, vector loop equation formed w e tri beta j, z e tri alpha j minus delta j minus z minus w is equal to zero. And which in uh, collected terms, I will end up with this equation. For four positions, we will have three equations. w e to beta two minus one plus z e to alpha three minus one is equal to delta two, w e to beta three minus one, z e to alpha three minus one is equal to delta three, W e to i beta 4 minus 1 plus z e to i alpha 4 minus 1 is equal to delta 4. Now, we have three complex equations. In real plane, this will correspond to six scalar equations. If I equate the real and imaginary parts of these equations, I will end up with six scalar equations. Now, in these equations, what we don't know as a parameter is uh, or let us say first, we, we, what we know is alpha 2 delta 2, alpha 3 delta 3, alpha 4 delta 4 is given. It is the four position and uh, derived from the four positions as you can see over here. Now what we don't know is the two complex numbers, w and z, we don't know. And we don't know beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4, the crank angles. So this will constitute two complex three scalar or seven scalar unknowns. If you like, I consider x and y coordinates of w and z separately, it will be end up with seven unknowns. Six scalar equations in seven scalar unknowns, so that means we have a single parameter that we can change, we can arbitrarily select. Uh, so that is one free parameter we have. Now, normally, it is one of these betas. It doesn't make which beta you select. And one other thing that I would like to show you here is numbering is very arbitrary. Can I shuffle these equations and obtain the same result mathematically? You see, mathematics doesn't know the order of these equations. I can take this and take it as a first equation. In that case, what it was uh, the second position becomes the third position. That's all. <laughs> because when you are writing the equations, you don't see two, three, four. You see the order of the equation. So uh, uh, please keep this in mind. That's very important uh, normally. So what we do is we have to show these equations given a value of beta 2 or beta 3, beta 4, it doesn't matter. We have to solve the remaining six unknowns. Now, when I look at these equations, notice, these six equations are linear in terms of W and Z. They are non-linear in terms of beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4. So what we do is this. 
let me assume somehow for a given value of beta 2 may I have determined beta 3 and beta 4 somehow I don't know how but somehow I have determined them in that case I have three linear equations in two unknowns w and z we know from linear algebra for th uh, two, uh, three equations in two unknowns to normally the equations will be inconsistent the only way that you ha can have a solution for w and z is the augmented matrix of the set of equations is equal to zero which means the rank of this uh, this set of equations is two, meaning there are two independent equations in two unknowns. Only in that case you can solve for W and Z. Otherwise it will be inconsistent. So we say, okay, we have somehow determined beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, and these equations must be consistent. So the rank of the augmented matrix, the determinant of the, the, this, uh, uh, the determinant must be equal to zero, so that the rank of this set of equations is equal to two. In effect, what we are doing is we are eliminating W and Z. We this determinant results with a one simple complex equation. This is exactly what we have done in case of center point and circle point and the specification in three position synthesis. Now we have to solve the set of equations, which is much easier than uh, solving that in those two, uh, determining the intersection of those two circles. Now this determinant, I can expand it with respect to the first column, you notice it has beta 2, beta 3, beta 4. We end up with this set. These determinants, 2 by 2 determinants, I call them capital delta, delta 2, delta 3, delta 4. Delta 1 is the is sum negative of the sum of these uh, determinants, because in here you have minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, so you add them up. Uh, so that's the other one. You end up with an equation. Notice, number one, these two by two determinants are all functions of position only. Alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, delta three, delta four, etc. These I can evaluate. I can, uh, given the pos four positions, I will, I will, I, I'm able to determine these values. They will end up, you will end up with a complex number. After those multiplications, these multiplications, you will end up with a complex number. Uh, A plus IB type, or uh, R by gamma type, okay? Either polar form or uh, Cartesian form, exponential form, we, we are sometimes called instead of polar, exponential form or Cartesian form, you will end up with a complex number. Now we have an equation in the following form delta 2 e to i beta 2 plus delta 3 e to i beta 3, delta 4 e to i beta 4 plus delta 1 is equal to 0. Now what we have done is we have eliminated W and Z. We have one complex equation relating beta 2 and beta 3. Beta 3, beta 4, and this beta 2. We have to solve this equation. Now one way of solving this equation is, notice, all these capital deltas, I know, I can express them in exponential form as a j e to i gamma j. You know, each one of them, I will determine the magnitude, I will determine the argument, and this is the case. Now, in that case, I will drag these, I will be able to write these equations, a2 e to i beta 2 plus gamma 2, plus a3 e to i beta 3 plus gamma 3, 
uh, a4 is to i beta 4 plus gamma 4 plus a1 is to i gamma 1 is equal to 0. Now, instead, what I will do is I will take a1 and a4 on the other side. Uh, first of all, it will be minus a1, minus a4 is to i uh, gamma 1, I, uh, gamma 1, uh, minus a1 is to i gamma 1, minus a4 is to i beta 4 plus gamma 4. But I will add, first, I will add pi, so to get rid of this minus sign, a1 is to i gamma 1 plus pi, a4 is to i theta, uh, beta 4 plus gamma 4 plus pi, correct? Next, I will divide every term by e to the i gamma 4 uh, plus pi, divide every term into i gamma 4 plus pi. Uh, in that case, I will, uh, since uh, it is the e to i gamma 4 plus pi, if I take it to the numerator, it will be e to minus i gamma 4 plus pi, e gamma 1 plus, uh, plus pi. Uh, since the exponents add, I will end up with a2 is to i theta 1, 2, a3 is to i theta 1, 3, a1 a plus a4 is to i theta 1, 4, where theta 1, 2 is beta 2 plus gamma 1 minus gamma 1 minus pi. Be be theta 1, 3 is beta 3 plus gamma 3. Uh, minus gamma 1 minus pi, since I have subtracted e to i, uh, by e to i gamma 1 plus pi. Theta 1, 4, since it had pi, now it will be beta 1, 4 plus gamma 4 minus gamma 1. Now, with this uh, substitution, I'm sure all of you can realize that this equation is similar to what you have seen in ME301, which is the loop closure equation of a four bar. This is the loop closure equation of a four bar. You know how to solve this equation. We given theta one two, you can solve this equation analytically or geometrically in fact, in either way. Now, once you assume beta two, since these values are all known, okay, so you determine theta 1, 2. Solve this equation to determine theta 1, 3 and theta 1, 4. And then solve for beta 3 and theta 4 from these equations. That's it. You have determined beta 3, beta 4. Uh, I will discuss how we can determine W and Z. It's really simple, but uh, this is the uh, it's one way of solving this set of equations, solving a four bar. One difference between that uh, the previous four bar, uh, the physical four bar case, is this is a fictitious four bar. So that means the two values, open or cross formally, remember we said for the four bar, both of them are valid in this case because this is a vector loop equation. It is not a physical four bar mechanism per se. In case of a four, four bar mechanism, once the mechanism is assembled in a, in a, in a, four, a cross form, it will remain in a cross form. Once it is assembled in open form, it will remain in a open form uh, unless you dismantle the joints and reassemble the mechanism. In this case, since it is a fictitious four bar, it is the vector loop, you have to take care of both of the solutions. You have to uh, solve for both solutions, and both of them will be valid. So you will have, for every value of beta 2 that you select, or beta 3 or beta 4, it doesn't make any difference. For every value of beta 2 you select, you are going to have two different values for beta 3 and beta 4. So you will end up with two sets of solutions for each beta 2 you select. That's very important. Remember, this was the same thing for uh, geometrical construction. We have always obtained 
uh, two solution pairs. Now, uh, once you solve for beta, normally you don't have to solve for beta, uh, both beta 3 and beta 4. Because once you solve for either beta 3 or beta 4, notice, as I said, now these three equations are linearly dependent. We know it, we have made, made sure it is, using these values of betas. Now I can select any two of them. If you solve for beta 3, you first select, you determine, if you select beta 2, determine beta 3, you use this, these two equations to solve for W and C. Since they are linear, it is very simple. Correct? It is very simple to solve for two linear equations. In fact, I think I have written this over here. Uh, another way of solving this set of new, uh, equations is, solving this set, uh, equation is as follows. Notice if I'm given beta 2, since I know capital deltas, they are position available, they are functions of position, so I can determine those values. Now I have I can move this delta 2 each time beta 2 and delta 1 on the other side and call this delta. I will have delta 3 e to i beta 3 plus delta 4 e to i beta 4 plus delta is equal to 0. I have three vectors, three complex numbers, which means that vectors in plane, x plus i1. Uh, they form a chain. They form a, you know, like this. When I rotate delta 3 by beta 3, when I rotate delta 4 by beta 4, they close from a loop. This is what it means. When delta two, 3 is rotated by beta 3, when delta 4 is rotated by beta 4, delta is fixed, these angles are beta 2, 3, and beta 4. Uh, now, you can use this geometrical construction to determine beta 3, beta 4. Use, you know, this geometrical construction, you can treat it and have it. I have shown it for centripetal determination. Another way is take whichever one you want to eliminate. If you want to eliminate delta 4, you take it to one side, the other terms on the other side, uh, multiply side by side, you end up with uh, delta 1, delta 4, 1 bar, delta 3, delta 3 bar, delta, delta uh, bar, delta bar, delta 3, e to i beta 3, delta, delta 3 bar, e to i minus i beta 3. Okay, you multiply side by side. So that eliminates beta 4. Now, uh, notice delta, if I said delta 3, delta 3 bar, delta, uh, uh, delta bar, delta 4, delta 4 bar, take this to the other side, call it D. Notice if you multiply a complex number with its complex time unit, it results with a real term. Okay? It is real. So D is real. Then I define C D bar D3, D bar D3, the coefficient of e to the i beta 3. Notice the coefficient of e to the minus i beta 3 is C bar. Now I will have an equation in the following form. C e to the i beta 3 plus C bar e to the minus i beta 3 plus D. D is real. Notice these terms, C e to i beta 3, if I take the complex conjugate of it, it is C bar e to minus i beta 3. If I add a real a complex number with its complex conjugate, a plus i b plus a minus i b, imaginary parts cancel, you end up with a twice the real part. So this term, the sum of this, these terms, is also real. Okay, this is a real equation. You have eliminated beta 4 now, 
you had a one complex equation, meaning two scalar equations. Now you eliminated beta 4. Uh, you have uh, one equation, scalar equation, in one unknown, beta 3. The way to solve this equation is, there are lots of different ways of solving this equation, by the way. I mean, uh, you can even use, uh, since it is, you can uh, uh, write e drive beta 3 as uh, uh, cosine beta 3 plus i sine beta 3, and uh, say c is equal to a plus i b, uh, expand these terms and uh, on the updated equation, you can do that. But uh, simpler than that, uh, what we, we do is, if you let t is equal to e to i beta 3, if I let t is equal to e to i beta 3, e to the minus i beta 3 is equal to 1 over t. Okay? If I substitute this into this equation, it is ct plus c by 1 over t plus d is equal to 0. Since t is not equal to 0, e to i beta 3 is not equal to 0, uh, so I multiply every term by t, I end up with ct squared plus dt plus c bar is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. So you can solve for t12, d minus d plus or minus d squared minus 4, c, c bar. Notice this is real, this is real. Uh, T12, you have two solutions. The argument of T is going to give you beta 3. Magnitude of T, we can check this, it must be equal to 1 because it's a unit vector. E to I beta 3 has unit. Uh, after solving for beta 3, I think I just mentioned this. Uh, you know beta 2, you are you specifying beta 2. Notice it is very simple to solve for minus d and uh, w from these two equations. And k1, a point, a circle point, will be minus c from these equations. And a center point, corresponding center point to k1, is minus z minus w, is the center point. Okay? That's that simple. Uh, I have written in macro uh, as a uh, function routine in Excel. Function Burmester. I like it. I mean, there's no big deal about these things because you can write these the same macro in uh, MATLAB. You can write the same macro in MATCAD. I have done it, so I know. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make any difference, but let me repeat, I prefer Excel because it's cheap. Uh, it is very easy to use, I would say. And I can use all the facilities of Excel, like graphing, etc., uh, with no big deal. So that's why I, I prefer Excel. But let me stress this, it is a tool. I, you can use some other tool instead, I don't care. But uh, in this course, I want you to use Excel to make, you know, to have a uniform uh, thing for all, for the whole class. But later, if you prefer using MATLAB, of course you can use, uh, convert these uh, small function routines to MATLAB as well. No, no problem. Use function three position basic two, or three position, uh, position basic. Now, Burmester function Burmester, you specify delta two, delta three, delta four, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four. These are the four positions of a moving plane. You specify that those. and you specify a certain crack uh, angle beta two. Let me repeat, if you want to de define beta 3, take it as a first equation, okay? Shuffle your equations, take it as the first equation, renumber them, and that will be it. So don't worry, it's the same thing. 
So this Burmese step is going to give you beta 4 as the solution. Okay? If you want to have beta 3 as the solution, shuffle it. I don't care. Once you obtain beta 4, beta 2, now you can go into it's a constant, it, forget about the four positions, think about it as three positions. Constant position two, three, four. It doesn't matter. One, one, two, uh, one, two, four. Sorry. So what you do is call three basic position basic two. This returns minus z and r vectors. Okay? This will return minus z and r, basic two. If you call three position basic, it will return z and r. Okay? Select two values for beta two, you will obtain two, uh, four different solutions because each beta two is going to result with two different beta codes. Okay, so you can select whichever one you like. There are some other additional functions you may want to use. Multiplication, division, uh, conversion, etc. And uh, here they are. Now, solve, determine W and Z, determine M and K1. Now, select two of them and design your four bar. And then you have to check. There is no way out. The mechanism may be movable or not. I don't know. That you have to check. Now, in case of past duration with prescribed timing, this time you will be given delta 2, delta 3, delta 4, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4. Okay? You want to describe a certain path and correlate it with the crack and go. All you have to do is assume beta j as alpha j. I'll call them alpha j prime. Now you have four position synthesis. You have converted the past generation to position synthesis problem. Assume beta prime 2 it should be beta, beta prime 2. And solve for beta prime 3, beta prime 4, or one of them. Determine z prime and r1. Okay? That is not your solution because you have assumed beta as your crank angle. Now, think of this parallelogram construction. In that case, what happens is the angular rotation of the moving link is beta 2, beta 2 prime, beta 3 prime, beta 4 prime. Those are your new alpha values. Center point is given by the same R1 that you have determined. Because notice, this in this parallelogram, A0 is fixed. M is R1. K1 instead of minus z over here, it is r1 plus z. Okay? r1 plus z gives us uh, the location of the circle point, r1 plus z prime. Select a0 as m, a1 as k1. Okay? That's it. For the second diode, now this is important. For the second diode, notice it is not the crank air angles that we have assumed as the uh, link, uh, the angle of A, A P A, or A A zero. Now you have determined beta one prime, beta beta two prime, beta three prime, beta four prime. Those are your angles of the moving body. Use them as alpha j, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, 
I don't know why the hell I uh, said beta 1, uh, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4. And now assume for the other crank, new value for beta 2, solve. Let me repeat, you have to solve two different problems. In one case, you take the crank angle as the uh, moving body angle, solve, and then the crank angle of the, uh, this problem is the angular rotation of the moving body. Use it to solve for the next. Okay? So that is for path generation precise timing. In case of correlation of crank angles, assume B0, B1 as Z beam. Delta J, these vectors, will be ZB e to I, psi 1 J minus 1, these vectors. Use these vectors. Beta J is phi 1 J, the crank angles. Now, this is, uh, is uh, as you can see, pasture with prescribed timing. So what you do is solve path generation with prescribed timing only once. In case of path generation with prescribed timing, you solve the problem twice. Once for A1, using this conversion and solving. Next, for the other diet, you have to use beta primes as alpha j's, and then select beta 2 for the other crack angles, and then solve for uh, B1, A, A, B0. Now, in this case, you only saw once and obtain the result. Okay? The last problem that we are going to discuss, okay, we have seen three positions to lie on a straight line. Now, what happens if you have four positions, if you want four positions to lie on a straight line? Meaning, design a slider for four positions. The answer is very simple. Constant positions 1, 2, and 3, geometrically. Constant positions 1, 2, and 3. The points, the locus of points, whose three homologous points lie on a straight line, is there on the circumcircle of the image probe triangle, P12, P13, P341. Draw that circle. Next, forget about position 3. Consider positions 1, 2, and 4. The locus of points on the moving plane. Uh, again, these uh, th three homologous points should lie on a straight line is P12, P1, uh, is the circumcircle of the image pole triangle, P12, P14, P241. Now, uh, notice it is the, another circle. These two circles are going to intersect in two places. One, for sure, since the two uh, the triangles have one common pole, P12, they have to intersect at P12. The other point of intersection is what we are going to call Ball's point. Usually, uh, students think that it is, uh, the word is from the word word ball, but it is the name of a gentleman, Sir Robert Ball. Uh, he was a mathematician in the 1840s during the Industrial Revolution. He had some, he, he worked, uh, but he is very well known in uh, spatial uh, kinematics, uh, screw uh, theory. Uh, so it is to his honor we call it Ball's point B. Uh, analytically, for positions 1, 2, and 3, this is the equation. We have seen this equation. For positions 1, 2, and 4, this is the equation. Lambda is a parameter, lambda is a parameter. Now, both of these equations, when lambda is equal to 0, uh, infinity, when, the, when lambda goes to infinity, it is minus z is equal to delta 2, 1 minus z e to i alpha 2. This is P12, the location of pole, P12. Uh, you can determine the other uh, 
point, uh, point of intersection of these two circles, these are circles, by equating these two to each other and solving for lambda. In that case, I call it lambda b, the b value, lambda value that corresponds to the ball's point. Four homologous points to, uh, that lie on a straight line. There's a unique point in this case. Uh, equate the two, so for lambda b, it's this result. Function lambda b is delta 2, delta 3, delta 4, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4. These are the position variables. You, you define the positions. You obtain from this equation, you determine a simple constant, one constant, lambda b. If you plug this into uh, three position synthesis, uh, the equations uh, that give z into this equation, or this equation, it doesn't matter, you obtain a minus z, which is the location of a1, whose four homologous points lie on a straight line. So this is the uh, final of analytical methods in four position synthesis.